Hey everybody, Dinner Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki, Demon of the Fleeting Blossom. We are going after Chikage Kazuma, and uh, it's going to take a little while to get to actually be on his path because, you know, you have to go through and make all these decisions and try not to get too close to any one particular guy. So the first video didn't really exactly have anything to do with him, but uh, hopefully we'll have something in this one that will make a few more choices and then hopefully we'll actually be hanging out with him soon. So for this choice, when she asked me about if I was staying here for a particular guy, this time I say no because the one I'm after is a pretty blonde boy who is not a member of the Shinsengumi. No, it's not that. I'm just... I'm confused. All this time, I thought I was human. My ability to heal had been a little strange, perhaps, but I never thought that it meant I wasn't even human. Or perhaps I just never allowed myself to think that. To try and hide my condition made me lonely enough. If I had allowed myself to believe I wasn't human, then it would have driven me even farther away. I understand, but now is not the time for that sort of angst, dear. You are a demon, and that is a fact neither you nor I can change. But none of this makes any sense. Not only am I a demon, but I'm the last survivor of some big demon clan. It's all just... Ah, I see. For a moment, she looks suddenly lonely. Well... If you do not wish to go, I cannot force you. So I guess, like, nobody knows about my twin brother. I'm sorry. Could you just give me some time to think? If what Sen had told me was the truth, then I would need to accept it, but so far, I had only her word. I wanted to find my father and ask him if what she told me was the truth. Oh, that's going to be quite the task. Forwarding. And as usual, I go outside. I have to go, Shimada. And I had to try to escape again. But why? I want to be with him. Here I must decide to stay home. And this time go find Saito, so we'll have some new material here. I'll go find Saito. If Inoue and the others were here, and Okito was in bed, there was still one more man unaccounted for who might be able to help. I'd only run for a short distance when I collided with someone. Saito! No, you're... The man I'd hit was a fury, mad with bloodlust. I scrambled back just as a voice called out from the darkness behind me. Down. Saito! Just the man I was looking for. I threw myself to the ground. It occurred to me that it was slightly ironic to have been saved by the man I'd gone to find. When I turned, he was studying the fallen fury, his mouth a thin line. The fury corps lost control then. Unfortunate. S Saito! Kazuma is here. Inoue is fighting him with some of the other men, but... I see. Where? Oh, over here. Huh? My legs were shaking so bad I couldn't move. Whether it was because of the fury who had attacked me, or the thought of facing Kazuma again, or relief at seeing Saito, I couldn't say. He looked down at me, shivering on the floor, and his voice was cool and calm. You needn't worry. As long as I have orders to protect you, I will do so regardless of circumstance. My body stilled. Saito was a man of few words, and when he did speak, it was never unnecessarily, but he had taken the time to comfort me. That meant he... Thank you. There is no time. We must go. When we returned to the battlefield I'd left only moments ago, Kazuma was still enraged. G Damn you! Shimada, stay in position. If even one of us is killed, the formation is ruined. Sweat shone on their brows, and their chests heaved as each of them struggled for breath. Kazuma looked no more winded than a man enjoying a leisurely stroll. He had killed countless furies, fought the Shinsengumi to a standstill, and not suffered even a single scratch. That's my man. In no way! Yukimura, you bought Saito. Good. If anyone is hurt, please tell them to pull back. I will handle this. Oh, interesting. So you are here. Yes, I am, and I have come to check your rampage. Or, or at least to try. Nonetheless, I have been ordered to protect her, and so I will. His body lowered into a crouch, and his hand reached for his sword. He was preparing for lie. Instead of entering a stance of his own, Kazuma looked at Saito for a moment, then sheathed his own sword and slowly backed away. You're running? Unfortunately, I'm here today only to buy time for another. 
I am not here on personal business, and I never intended to stay long. His eyes slid to me, and he smirked. Remember that. This is the fate of a false demon. His cold gaze fell on the corpses of the Furies. Blood drives them to madness. They attack their allies. And for what? Even in mass, they cannot defeat a true demon. They are pathetic creatures, destined to die like dogs. Do you really wish to live surrounded by such filth? Better you come with me. No, I'll never do that. And yet I will be very shortly. He flashed his teeth in a grin, then turned on his heel and melted into the darkness. He's retreated. Are you okay? Yes, but only because they... Because you protected me. I see. I couldn't shake what Kazuma had said, but I managed to give Saito a smile. You know it. We got some bad news. Some of the Furies that got past us made it into the building. I see. How much damage did they do? Is Soji okay? Not much. They were killed almost immediately. By who? There's no one inside who could have done that. Soji? By Okita. When I went to his room, the floor was covered in dead furies. <laughs> what? But I thought Okita was too sick to fight. That's why we need to get Dr. Matsumoto immediately. E yes At this choice, I stay here. Ah, and here I think is where things really get different. It was the end of the year, 1867. With a popular sentiment against them, the Tokugawa shogunate relinquished their political power to the imperial court. Lord Yoshinobu Tokugawa resigned his position as shogun and retired to Osaka Castle to set about building a system that would restrict the growing Satsuma Choshu influence. But even in Edo, the shogun's home, the architects of his political downfall were making trouble. When some Satsuma vassals started to revolt in Edo, the shogunate forces responded with an attack on their domain. After the Edo incident, more shogunate troops began to gather in Osaka, ostensibly to force the Satsuma into taking responsibility for their actions in Edo. The shogunate army hoped that a show of strength would help establish them as a force to be reckoned with, even under the new government. We thought they were right to do so. We thought that a massive show of force would likely pressure the Satsuma domain into backing down. Ignorant of Lord Yoshinobu's intentions, the Shinsengumi was assigned to guard the Fushimi magistrate's office, along with soldiers gathered from other domains. Then, just as the new year was beginning, something terrible happened. Chief Kondo was shot on his way home from a meeting in, in Kyoto. He survived the attack, but suffered a serious wound to his right shoulder. Around the same time, we learned that Okita had contracted tuberculosis, and had grown so bad he could barely walk. Kondo and Okita were both sent to Osaka Castle to be treated by Dr. Matsumoto. It was the first day of the new year, and for some reason, the Fushimi Magistrate's office was especially noisy. Everywhere, men were checking their weapons or armor as if they were preparing to march out to battle. Had the Satsuma domain attacked? Um... Nagakura was barking orders left and right, so I waited for a lull before I spoke up. I decided being straightforward was the best choice. Has something happened? He nodded and gave a nervous laugh. Yeah. It looks like the rest of the old shogunate army in Osaka is heading this way. Really? Reinforcements were coming then. I thought for a moment before my next question. Does that mean we're going to join up with them and have an all-out battle with the Satsuma and Choshu? Nagakura shook his head. No, we'll probably just try and scare them into backing down. The shogunate army should have the numbers for it. It sounded like a good plan. If the Satsuma Choshu army could just be frightened away, we could keep Kyoto from turning into a battlefield. The Shogun army has about 15,000 men in Osaka, but the Satsuma Choshu together only have about 5,000. It doesn't take a general to see who'd win in that fight. So long as they're not stupid, I'm sure they'll retreat. He laughed and I felt reassured, maybe even hopeful. That'd be nice, but we're dealing with the Satsuma and the Choshu. I hadn't noticed Hijikata come over, but he seemed to have heard most of our conversation. Standing next to him, silent as always, was Saito. Don't worry about it. Even those bastards can count, right? Saito shrugged. Have you already forgotten the Hamagori Rebellion? When they make a choice and commit to it entirely, 
no matter the cost. When they make a choice, they commit to it entirely, no matter the cost or the odds. Hijikata and Saito didn't seem to share Nagakura's optimistic appraisal, or were at least being somewhat more cautious. Nagakura's face twisted into an uncharacteristic frown. No, I haven't forgotten. That's why I've been preparing for a battle since this morning. That was when we heard it. <laughs> for a long moment, we simply stared at one another, speechless. It was Nagakura who broke the silence. Hey, were those gunshots? Have they started fighting? Hijikata sighed. Looks like it. Saito, take Yamazaki. Go find out what's happening. Shinpachi, tell the men to get ready for battle. Saito and Nagakura nodded. Understood. Got it. With that, they turned and jogged off to attend their duties. Hijikata spun on his heel and left as well, either ignorant of my presence or uninterested in it. <sighs> the Hamagori Rebellion had involved the Choshu Domain attacking Kyoto, where they'd been repelled by a combination of Shogunate and Satsuma forces. This time, however, the situation was reversed. It was the Shogunate's forces on the attack, and the Satsuma and Choshu were defending Kyoto from them. Why are they doing this? Nobody wants Kyoto to become a war zone, do they? It was looking more and more likely that Kyoto would turn into a battlefield. But what happened to the city? To its people? Time wore on, and the gunfire began to echo across the Kyoto sky. The old Shogunate army and the Satsuma Choshu forces had finally come to blows. War had begun. When the Fushimi Magistrate's office came under cannon bombardment, a large contingent of Shinsengumi soldiers headed out to engage the attackers. Since I was useless in battle, I was to remain behind in the Magistrate's office. What happened to our cannons? Can't we fire back at them? Inoue had been assigned to the defense of the building itself, and was discussing his options with his men. Um, but they've got the high ground. We can't actually fire up that far. The enemy cannons had set themselves up on a nearby hill. It was easy enough for them to fire down at us, but our shells couldn't reach them. I see. So all we can do is sit here and let them attack us. He glared up at the hilltop. Don't we have ninjas we can send at them? If we couldn't fire back, there was nothing to stop the enemy from covering the magistrate's office in cannon fire. Inoue glanced over at me. What do you want me to do? You should go. This place is too dangerous. But... Even if I couldn't fight, there were things I could do. I could carry ammunition or weapons or run messages. I wanted to help too. But before I could explain, Inoue cut me off with a gentle smile. It's alright. You can leave this one to us. <sighs> he was right, of course. There was nothing I could do that another member of the Shinsengumi couldn't also do. And although plenty of the men were out fighting, there were still a lot of them left at the Magistrate's office. All there was to do now was endure. So where am I supposed to go exactly? I went back inside and sat down in the corner of my room. But if this place is under attack, aren't I in danger of being inside? Every time a shell landed, the whole building shook, but all I could do was sit patiently and wait for the bombardment to end. My utter impotence made me want to cry. As the sun began to dip toward the horizon, the gunfire stopped, and the magistrate's office was thrown into eerie silence. After a few moments of quiet, I heard the front gate creak open, and knew the men who had gone out to fight had returned. I leapt up and ran out to greet them. Oh! As I watched Hijikata and the rest troop silently into the compound, I felt my body sag with relief. As I looked close, however, I saw that they had little to be excited about. Every face was hard and quiet, and most were smudged with dirt or blood. Many of the men were injured, and as they limped through the gate, their blood stained the courtyard red. The battle's outcome was written plain across every face that returned. I had thought the bombardment finished, but as night fell it resumed. The cannonballs left small fires behind when they hit, and our assailants seemed to use those sight in on the magistrate's office, as the attack soon grew more intense. Our situation grew steadily more desperate until Hijikata finally called a meeting of the captains. We can't hold this place any longer. I talked to the Aizu and we're leaving. 
Harada frowned. And going where? Yodo Castle. We'll fortify and resupply there, then attack. He turned immediately to Saito and continued, leaving no time for further questions. Saito, you get the wounded together. Nagakura, Harada, you two take any men who can still fight and secure a path for a retreat. Gen, pack up our guns, ammunition, and money. Anything we don't want the rebels getting their hands on. If you can get it out, take it. Otherwise, destroy it. Finished, he stood to leave. Um... I was scared to even speak up, but I was worried what might happen to me if I didn't. Where should I go? He looked down, as if noticing me for the first time. Right. Gen, can you take her to Yodo Castle? Inoue nodded calmly, apparently unaffected by the tense atmosphere. Uh, of course. As soon as Hijikata disappeared, so did the others, off to fulfill their assigned tasks. No one spoke to me. They hadn't the time. I wanted to talk to someone about... about anything. Just talking would have done wonders to calm my mind and my heart, but everyone was far too busy to spare a moment to talk to me. At least I could try and help Inoue and not be too much of a burden on everyone else. Repeating that to myself in an effort to calm down, I followed him silently. Let's go. Right. After we had moved out or destroyed the weapons, ammunition, and other things, we snuck out of the magistrate's office. By then, the rest of the Shinsengumi had departed. We were the last to leave. <laughs> I blinked awake some time later. How much later, I don't know. Still groggy, I looked up in time to see one of the walls collapse in flame. We had to leave, and quickly. I struggled to my feet and looked around frantically for Inoue. Inoue? He'd been there with me when the cannonball had fallen, but now he was nowhere to be seen. Did the wall? I rushed over to check, but fortunately it didn't look like there had been anyone under the wall when it collapsed. That relief lasted only a moment though, quickly replaced by a growing anxiety. I had been left behind. The only sound I could hear was the hungry cackling of the flames, and they were getting louder by the second. I need to get out of here. Fear gripping my stomach, fear of being abandoned for dead on the battlefield, and I ran, not caring where. All around me, gunshots echoed through the night. <sighs> After a few minutes of desperately running, I began to calm down and started to think through my situation. The city would be too dangerous, which meant that my best option was the forest. I changed direction. I ran as fast as I could toward the forest, Yodo Castle and the Shinsengumi. I think it's this way. The forest at night was frightening, but being alone made it utterly terrifying. I told myself over and over that once I reached Yodo Castle everything would be fine, but I had been moving at a brisk pace for some time, and my legs and chest were beginning to burn. Stop! Ah! The voice made me jump. I grabbed my short sword with a shaking hand and spun around to see a man dressed in the uniform of a foot, foot soldier. A sigh of relief escaped my lips. The soldiers of the Satsuma and Choshu wore much more western garb, which meant this man was an ally. He looked suspicious of me, but I was sure he'd understand once I explained myself. I'm sorry I surprised you, but I need to ask you something. I drew myself up as tall as I could. Have you seen the Shinsengumi around here? The Shinsengumi? He frowned and I nodded. Yes, I got separated from my division. Enemy sighted. I got a spy from the Shinsengumi. Uh, what? For a second, I stood stunned looking at the man. Why had he done that? Because he's not your ally. Then I turned and ran. You misjudged the situation. I had no doubt that things would only get worse if I waited for whoever he had called to show up. What was going on? As I ran breathlessly through the forest, the horrible truth dawned on me. If men who were supposed to be our allies were calling the Shinsengumi an enemy, they could only have betrayed us. They'd realized that the Shogunate's army was going to lose and chosen to switch to the winning side. It made my stomach feel sick. Ah! Suddenly, another foot soldier appeared from the bushes in front of me. 
Catch him! He's from the Shinsengumi! I could hear the first soldier I'd met yelling from behind me. There wasn't anywhere to run now. I drew my sword. You! I struggled to keep my voice calm, even as my hands shook on the hilt of my sword. You abandoned the Shogunate! You betrayed us! I saw a flash of guilt cross their faces, and then one of the men yelled in response. There is no Shogun left to betray. I decide who my allies and enemies are now. Kazuma, save me! Even if the Shogunate isn't in power anymore, they protected you when they were. How can you forget that? I felt my own voice rise as I spoke. You were a samurai, right? Then you took advantage of the Shogunate's protection. And now you'll just turn your back on someone you owe so much to? How can you call yourself samurai? The people I knew in the Shinsengumi were true samurai, whatever their titles. These soldiers barely even deserved to be called men. Unfortunately, they didn't seem to have been particularly cowed by my speech. Instead, they were exchanging confused frowns and not listening at all. That's a pretty high voice for a boy. Is that a girl? Yeah, I think you're right. Don't know why she's dressed like a boy. Does it really matter if I'm a boy or a girl? You know nothing about what happens to women in wartime, do you? I glared at them. Do they really think that my sex is more important than how to live an honorable life? Hey, we got a girl over here. Come take a look. More men appeared out of the forest, curious to see what the commotion was. Soon, there were at least ten of them, possibly more. She says she's from the Shinsengumi. If we capture her and turn her over to the Satsuma, then we might get a reward. They began talking amongst each other, sending the occasional leering grin my way. Yeah, not a bad idea, but I think we should, uh, make sure she's a girl first. The look they gave me was not difficult to interpret. <sighs> Even if the foot soldiers didn't kill me, I had no illusions about what my fate would be with the Satsuma. Still, I felt only anger toward them, not fear. Could men who had betrayed their lord really be called samurai? Still, I decided, if I was going to die, then I would take as many of them with me as I could. I took a deep breath, wrapped my hand tightly around the hilt of my sword, and waited for it to begin. The brilliant silver white of a blade flashed in the dark forest, and half of the men surrounding me simply crumpled to the ground. They didn't move. A man stepped into the light. What are you doing here? I'd like to ask you the same thing. He was the last person I'd expected to see. Kazuma? I wasn't the only person he had surprised. What are you? She, she's ours. Just back off and you won't get hurt. Their weapons shook as they backed slowly away from Kazuma. He scowled at them. Shut up. Almost as an afterthought, he swung his arm in a lazy arc. The remaining soldiers collapsed. <laughs> Pathetic. He turned away from the corpses and sheathed his bloody sword. Then he looked at me. <sighs> I looked back, refusing to lower my guard. He held that pose for several moments before he sighed in exasperation. I'll ask again. What are you doing here? Oh! i completely forgotten this question. Uh... I mulled it over for a moment. Kazuma was in the employ of the Satsuma, so I didn't want to tell him anything about the Shinsengumi, but... Kazuma had just saved my life, despite whatever else had passed between us before. In that light, to not tell him at least something seemed awfully rude. When I spoke, my voice was unexpectedly weak. I was thinking of going to Yodo Castle. Kazuma narrowed his eyes. I see. Abandoning Fushimi to retreat to Yoro Castle. <sighs> I kept my mouth shut. I would answer his question if I had to, but I wouldn't volunteer anything more. He stared at me for several more seconds, then gave a frustrated sigh. Didn't they say they would protect you? What are you doing here? I wrangled at his implied insult toward the Shinsengumi. It's not their fault. I, I got lost. His mouth twitched up in a sarcastic smile. And it was I who protected you. How ironic. <sighs> there didn't seem to be any malice behind his smile, but... I think he's just amused. I wasn't anywhere near ready to trust him. 
but I couldn't deny that without his intervention, I would have almost certainly have died. And been raped. Um, thank you. I gave him a quick, shallow bow. For saving me. His face didn't change. Put your sword away. I'm not here to kidnap you. Oh. I had forgotten that the sword was still out. Kazuma had saved me, and if he'd been intending to kidnap me or kill me, he would have easily done so already. Somewhat reluctantly, I slid the blade back into its scabbard. What do you intend to do now? That seemed strange. But why should he care about my plans? Still, they were hardly a great secret. I am planning to head for Yodo Castle. I need to join the rest of the Shinsengumi as soon as I can. He shrugged and gave me another tight half grin. That wouldn't be a good idea. Why? His words were slippery. It felt as if he were insulting the Shinsengumi, but I couldn't quite figure out how. Of course he had no say in what I did or didn't do, but if he had a reason to try and stop me, I should probably know what it was. The Satsuma already control the land between here and Yodo Castle. To join your friends, you would have to make your way through an army. Oh. What he was saying made sense. I'd just run into some enemy soldiers, and without Kazuma's help, I would have died. My chances of surviving another similar encounter were very low. For several moments, I thought silently. Kazuma gave me his half-smile. Let me tell you a little secret. Yodo Castle is about to switch sides. Oh, crap. The Shinsengumi are just walking into a trap, then. What? Did he mean that Yodo Castle would betray the Shogunate, too? No, they wouldn't. The Yodo Domain intends to ally itself with Satsuma and Choshu. Your friends won't be able to get into the castle. Trapped between an advancing army and a locked gate, they'll have to withdraw. If you did manage to reach them, you'd only get in the way. Better you don't go. Are you telling me the truth? He frowned. Why would I lie? The Tokugawa Shogunate is over. Dead. <laughs> Whatever Kazuma's faults were, my encounters with him so far suggested that lying wasn't one of them. If the Yodo Domain is going to betray them, then that just means I really have to hurry. Kazuma scowled, but before he could speak, I continued. The Shinsengumi don't know they've been betrayed. But if I can tell them, then maybe they can get away safely. Kazuma sighed. Alright, and there we're going to stop the video and find out if he's going to help us in the next one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to stop these videos somewhere. There's never a good place to stop. Almost never. Alright, so I hope to see you on my next video or in some of my other ones. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me. And I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.